Hey guys, this is Tori from Hat Suitors, and today we're going to be discussing another math problem. So, uh, two videos ago we had a problem of the week by Waterloo, and uh, this week we're going to do something, uh, another problem of the week, and uh, let's move to the problem now. So, for this week, the problem of the week is called, what are the possibilities? So, uh, I was really intrigued by this problem because I actually, um, this type of problem you can actually solve with... Uh, grade 9 and 10 math knowledge, but it's actually a grade 11 and 12 designated problem on the Waterloo website, and uh, it just it's just a problem with a few tricks and a few cases. I found it really interesting. So I'll just give you guys some time to read over the problem. So I hope you guys had some time reading over the problem. Uh, you can pause the video if you need some more time. So basically it's a problem with uh, a quadratic equation raised to a power by another quadratic equation. And it's supposed to equal 1. And it tells you that it has 5 solutions. So here it's a big clue by telling you it has 5 solutions. A lot of math contest problems may not actually give you that it has 5 solutions. But you have to find as many solutions as you can. But in this case it tells us this. So we have a goal that we can set to. And we have to determine all five values of x that's added by the equation. So in this case, when you first look at the problem, it might seem a bit daunting and you might not know how to approach it. But let's just consider the case where, let's just say, a number n is raised to the power of m and this equals to 1. Uh, when does this happen? We have to think about this. So for me, I noticed two cases immediately. I noticed the case where if m equals 0, n to the m will equal to 1. And I notice the case that if uh, n is equal to 1, n to the m will always equal to 1. So if we think about it in this case, any number raised to 0 will always equal to 1. And if you raise 1 to any power, it will always equal to 1. So let's just consider these two cases and solve this equation based off these two cases. So for case 1, when m is equal to 0, let's move on to this slide m is equal to 0, and that means that the quadratic equation x squared, uh, let's go back here, x squared plus 4x minus 60 would be equal to 0. And we could just do a bit of factoring to solve this. So we can see here that this could be actually split to 10 and it's positive 10 and negative 6. And uh, this will give us the middle number. And we determine the factoring as uh, such. And thus, we know that from this equation, x can either equal to negative 10 or x can equal to 6. And now we consider the second case now, where n is equal to 1. So then we set the quadratic equation of x squared minus 5x plus 5 is equal to 1. Let's just double check this is the quad correct quadratic. Yes, it is. So then we can move 1 to... Uh, the left side and we can do the factoring for this equation as well and then after factoring we know that x can equal to 4 or x can equal to 1 so here we uh, have four solutions for x how do we come up with the last solution for x so now you have to think a bit more because I feel like the first two cases are um, a lot more obvious than the last case. So after thinking a bit more, if you want to take some more time to think, you can do that on your own time. We can think of, we, could, we should consider the case where n is equal to negative 1. So case 3, n is equal to negative 1. Well, if we have negative 1, so if we raise negative 1 to the nth power, we know that it could either equal to negative 1 or it could equal to 1 or equal to 1. We know that it equals to 1 when the number, the power is an even number and negative 1 when it's an odd number. So in this case, when uh, x is, uh, so when uh, the bottom quadratic, x squared minus 5x plus 5 is equal to negative 1, we can rearrange and get x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. And we can factor for x minus 3 and x minus 2. However, in this case, 
not both of the solutions are the answers. In fact, only one of them will be the answers, and this will be the fifth num uh the fifth solution. And this is because we have to consider the power, so uh the power exponent, which would be x squared plus four x minus sixty. So we this is the 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 exponent that the quadratic equation is raised to. And we have to consider the case where this has to be an even number. So we have two uh possible solutions here, and we plug it into this equation to see uh to find the one that yields an even number. So 2 squared plus 4 to minus 60. And we know that this, we don't even have to do the math here. We know that it will equal to an even number because 2 squared is an even number. Even plus even is always even. And even minus even will always be even. So this will be even. And um, so that means that x minus, uh, when x equals to 3, it will not be even. Um, just to verify that, we can just write it out. So we see here that this 12 is an even number, even minus even is always even, however this is an odd number, and odd plus even will be odd. So in this case, only x equals to 2 is a solution, and thus we will have all the solutions. For uh, all five solutions, we have x equals to 2, x equals 4 or x equals to 1, x equals negative 10 or x equals to 6. And these are all the five possible solutions for this equation. And uh, just if you're wondering, I'll clarify a bit more, is that for case three, we considered um, the power, uh, and we did not consider like the power, the base for case one and two. But as for case one and two, it doesn't matter, as anything raised to zero, any n raised to zero, as long as the exponent is zero, will always go to one. And if the base, like n or like x squared minus five, x plus five is one, it doesn't matter what the exponent is, the answer will always be 1, and thus these two, uh, these four, or these two pairs of solutions are derived, and this uh, one is derived separately. So for case 3, you do have to think a bit more, whereas case 1 and 2 are a bit more obvious. So uh, I hope this cleared it all up for you guys. And um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments, and we will try our best to get to them and answer your questions. Once again, thank you for watching, and stay safe.